Eu moro na cidade de Deus. Às vezes aqui eles matam. Assim, eles, o policial invade assim, nas bocas de fumo. Aí rola matança, mata um policial. Aí, vive, aí entra em operação aqui. A gente fica mais é por aqui, perto de casa. Vai no lugar que a gente confia que não vai me tomar uma bala perdida e não poder voltar mais para nossas famílias. O sonho sempre, sempre meu de criança era ser jogador de futebol. No momento eu mais gosto, que é ser jornalista esportivo, fazer faculdade para jornalismo esportivo. Mas no momento, a educação no nosso Brasil, de escola até falar tal, não é uma das melhores. Com a corrupção agora, no momento, o, o que, os dinheiro mesmo que era para educação, para os filhos, para os nossos filhos, 90 é roubo. É, 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 o, o país leva, o presidente, o senador e tal. Hello. We're so happy to be here. We are going to learn about Mars and become explorers during this week. Um, so this week you will become scientists. My name is Jeff Marlowe, and I'm a postdoctoral scholar at Harvard University. And it was really one singular moment that turned me into a scientist. For me, it was watching a space shuttle launch at Cape Canaveral in Florida. Three, two, one, zero, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis. When I was finishing my PhD at Caltech, I was reflecting on how it was a very similar story for many of my peers, whether it was having a great teacher. We need people able to think complex and subtle thoughts. And I believe a great many children have that capability if only they're encouraged. A fun experiment. <laughs> or seeing the night sky through a telescope for the first time. And it occurred to me that this was a really quick and relatively easy way to inspire a whole generation of scientists, but it's something that is often not happening in much of the developing world. I realized that because of all of the amazing scientists I know and the type of research I do, that perhaps I was in a unique position to inspire kids to have this sort of experience and love science. Are we jumping the gun a little bit, talking about the geology at the waterfall? Right. So I gathered a few of my friends and we started brainstorming ways to bring the excitement of science to disadvantaged kids in a unique way. But so we're going to talk about yeah, the we're talk. water... I guess big picture kind of like, yeah, pools. how the landscape forms. We came up with a plan to inspire kids through the power of exploration. And we headed to the City of God in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, to implement it. Um, so this week you will become scientists. We know that it's impossible to just swoop in here for a week and change everything about these kids' lives. But we think we have some good ideas of where to start, to be able to spark that journey of discovery and hopefully change things for the better. My name is Vladimir. O Jeff só, só fala em inglês, então tudo que ele disser eu vou uh, traduzir. I am from Rio. Uh, I was born in, and raised here. The international crew doesn't speak Portuguese, the kids do not speak English, so we need to have translators. In Rio, there is a big, big gap between rich and poor, and these kids, they come from very poor backgrounds. When you are born and raised here, it's something that is always in your face. 
Limpa atende crianças de favelas fora do horário escolar. O projeto do Mars Academy, nós escolhemos alunos muito empenhados, que merecem uma oportunidade para crescer, para desenvolver. Depois disso, a gente achou necessário colocar também alguns alunos é, que tinham mais dificuldade. Muitas pessoas acham que é, talvez a gente não encontre nada dentro da criança, mas eles têm um potencial muito grande, só precisa aflorar, só precisa ser descoberta. So, I'm Jeff. Um, I know Jeff. <laughs> And I am a microbiologist studying organisms at the bottom of the ocean and in other crazy environments on Earth. I'm Paul. Uh, como... Paul? Oh. Paul. Oh. <laughs> uh, I like coffee and uh, baseball. I'm a Mars scientist at NASA, and I, I study the planets. I think the biggest challenge is going to be connecting with the kids uh, despite the language barrier and despite our different backgrounds. So they probably see us as um, scientists with completely different stories than theirs, coming from a different country with not much in common. And I can see how that would be a little bit uh, difficult to get past. Uh, I'm Carolyn, and uh, I am a geochemist. I've done quite a bit of astronomy teaching, but only at the university level, so this project might be a little bit outside my comfort zone. In particular, I work on rocks from the moon that have been brought back by astronauts. Luckily, I have a brother who's 17 years younger than me, and hopefully some of the skills I've gained from helping him with his schoolwork will help me um, better be able to understand the needs of these kids. How do you guys get information today? Do you read books? Do you listen to teachers? How do you learn? E como vocês obtêm informação hoje em, em dia? Com livros, com professores? Anyone have ideas? Mais alguma outra forma de obter informação? So, doing science is a way to get information, and you will be doing this this week. It's a new way to create knowledge. So we are actually going to do science right here, right now. The activity that we're doing is going to teach you about the scientific method. The very first thing in the scientific method is to have a question or to figure out what a problem is. And so our question for this experiment is which sense are we going to respond to the fastest? We also make a hypothesis which is what we think the answer to the question is going to be. I'm a little nervous about teaching the kids through translators and how uh, well we're going to be able to connect with them. Who thinks that we're going to respond fastest to sight? But I'm really hoping that the kids are just as excited as we are to be there and learn science. <laughs> Eu amo aprender sobre o mundo. Livros são tudo para mim. Quando você lê um livro, você se transporta para outro mundo. amigos. Eu sou bem antissocial. Eu gosto de ficar dentro de casa. Tem muitas vezes que eu quero sair, porém não posso, porque está havendo confronto da polícia e dos traficantes. E isso afeta muitos alguns amigos meus que querem seguir a vida do tráfico. Isso prejudica muito. Muitos pensam só em ficar no tráfico. Não pensam em crescer na vida. E isso é muito triste. Eu leio muito Harry Potter, 
E quando eu leio Harry Potter, eu vou pra outro lugar. Eu sinto que eu não estou ali, entendeu? Eu tô imaginando as cenas que são bem interessantes. Quando eu crescer, o que eu me vejo é sendo uma bióloga marinha. Eu gosto muito de animais aquáticos e eu gosto muito do mar. O mar é uma coisa muito surpreendente. Quando eu penso sobre o mar, é também como estar em outro mundo. E outra coisa também, que é a minha calma, assim como ler é o mar. So, what did you guys think? What was your experience? What what sense was the fastest? Which one did you guys find was the fastest? <laughs> what, about, what about for? <laughs> As the ruler experiment um, started to progress, we really started to lose some attention from the students, especially Nicholas. Um, and he was even influencing the other kids not to pay attention. So it was kind of a wake-up call. So that's what's really actually important about science, right? We, we have ideas about the world around us, but we have to test it and, and ask questions to figure out what's really going on. I really started to realize that this week is going to be really difficult in terms of keeping these kids engaged um, with the activities that we're doing and it's going to be more of a challenge than we expected. <laughs> Eu gosto dos, dos baile funk porque é uma das coisas que a gente pode curtir aqui fora isso, a gente só joga a bola e faz isso, mas de som mesmo, é o que tem aqui, é o que rola mais. Vai, nós vamos mais pra dançar, agarrado com garotas e tal, que aí vai mais pra dançar mesmo, que cantar essas músicas aqui no momento, que é falta de respeito. A gente não tem muita alternativa, que a gente pode curtir no momento. Cara, eu já não falei que você não faz muito ficar escutando esse tipo de música. Já falei isso contigo, né? Aí você tá tornando fazer de novo, né? Eu e minha irmã me criou desde pequeno. Aí logo depois minha mãe sofreu uma doença. Que aí possibilitou de eu continuar com ela. Não é possível. Você já tá com algum problema. Só pode. Uhum. Meu pai é vivo, mas entre aspas, mas eu não tenho coisa com ele desde criança. Meu irmão, ele foi, ele foi infelizmente, ele o caminho errado. Ali morava há muito tempo numa favela aqui do Rio de Janeiro, que o nome dela é Antares, é uma das favelas mais perigosas. Aí ele se envolveu, foi preso várias vezes. Aí teve confronto lá, aí invadiram, o outro comando invadiram lá. Aí os caras bateram mais, levaram ele para um lugar a matar e jogaram no corpo no rio. So it really is the classroom setting, especially when everyone's there. That's the challenge. So, so I'm gonna put two alpha males in the yep. same place. There, or three or four in our case. Yeah. So we just finished the first day of instruction, and there were a lot of challenges in the classroom. Some of the kids weren't really paying attention; they were goofing off. So the big troublemakers, or the people that don't get along, it's definitely Victor and Nicholas do not. They start to become annoying when they try to compete with each other. Yeah. yeah. I think maybe we, maybe we all sort of talk about this, like having it in smaller groups for everything, as much as we possibly can. It seems like there's a lot of work we're going to have to do, a lot of adjustments we'll have to make going forward. I sort of heard because she was very smart. She is great. She just went by the end class. Yeah. You know? Well, there's sort of the question of do we mix the troublesome boys with quiet girls? Or is that just a recipe for disaster? Or do we have all the quiet girls so they'll come out of their shell? I don't know. In the classroom, Nicholas has a lot of energy. He's pretty disruptive and he's trying to get attention from all of his friends. But he's really smart, and I think that if we can channel some of this energy into something that's productive, where he's bringing his classmates along on this journey of discovery, 
that would be really helpful. It might be interesting to try to get some like one on engineer some one on one time. So Nicholas, I brought you in here because I've noticed that you've had a little bit of trouble staying focused in class and I just wanted to talk to you about it. So I, I hope we can find a way to connect with the kids because I know, they're, I know they respect us. They're, they're going to respect us um, as scientists. But I want, I, I, what I really want is for them to feel like we're equals at some level, that, that, that they can envision themselves as scientists and maybe future colleagues of ours. So why do you think you're having trouble paying attention in class? So is it like you a lot of times want to look cool in front of your friends and, and be the one who's entertaining them? No, para mim eu sou um garoto muito alegre. Então eu prefiro sempre descontração. As aulas tipo é rabugento, tudo só sério. It's our first time doing this, so we're also learning and uh, I guess we'd like to know is there something we can do better for next time? Não ter coisa, não, não ter divertimento, porque pra gente aprender e ter o conhecimento tem que brincar, ter uma parte alegre e parte séria. Se tiver só séria, a gente não aprende. I'm just wondering, do you, do you stay out late sometimes and is that why you're tired when you show up? Eu tenho treino de futebol e estudo. Se, segunda e quarta e sexta é o futebol. E, e onde eu estudo para lá é de uma a duas horas de, de coisa, de ida e vinda. Aí, aí, quando eu vou pro futebol, que eu chego em casa seis, é assim que pouco eu chego oito, oito e meia, nove horas da noite. Aí às vezes eu tenho que acordar cinco horas, eu acordo cinco horas da manhã pra me arrumar pra ir pra escola. Aí me dá bem cansado de vir pra cá. I just wanted to say I really appreciate that you're showing up and really putting in the effort to, to be there and, and, um, and to be focused. And I know that's, that's tough. <laughs> Okay, now we're gonna take a look at uh, Mars. Okay, so this is Mars. <laughs> what we're gonna do is take a tour around the planet and talk about some of the different features on the surface. So this is Valles Marineris. It's the biggest canyon in the solar system. I first knew that I wanted to be a scientist when I realized that the stars that I was looking at were actual places. The Grand Canyon is very, very big, but you could fit seven of them inside Valles Marineris. Then I knew I wanted to be a planetary scientist when I found out that the planets were also places, that there were worlds, and we not only could go there, but we have gone there. What do you think that these features are here? Anybody? O branco é o alto, e o azul é o baixo. Então ali, então ali baixo, o bate. Yes, these are volcanoes, and they are the biggest volcanoes in the whole solar system. So Mars is a land of extremes. <laughs> Scientists think there was water, but that's one of the questions we're continuing to ask because it's not proven yet. What the kids don't know yet is that they're about to take part in an amazing once-in-a-lifetime experiment. This is the Curiosity rover that was developed by NASA and landed about three years ago on Mars. This is showing how we landed on the surface with the rover. It's called the Sky Crane. All of this is happening millions of kilometers away. So we also have uh, five satellites, orbiters, in orbit around Mars. We've already taken many pictures of the surface, but there's also some places that have never been explored before. So what you're going to do in this program is to choose a place or more than one place and take a picture of that place for the very first time with one of these orbiting spacecraft. Yes, you can. The main thing I want the kids to take away from this experience is the knowledge that there's a real spacecraft at Mars exploring right now and that they can be a part of that. I know, I understood. <laughs> we, have the, we have the spacecraft already there. What you're going to do is, is, is choose a place that you find in interesting for more scientific study, and you're going to tell the spacecraft to take a picture of that place. When they told me that there was be a project of NASA here in Brazil, I didn't believe it. For me, it wouldn't be possible, right? 
mas quando eu vi eles aqui, eu fiquei tipo assim, né? Oh, é verdade, então eu... As the week goes on, we're gonna learn more and more about Mars. And by the end of the week, you'll know enough about Mars to pick the most interesting place that you want to take the picture of. A lot of learning happens in a classroom, which is a very passive experience for a student. We want to change that. We want kids to be in charge of their own educational experience by pursuing what they find interesting, by going out into the world and learning through experience. So even though the city of God is just 10, 20 miles away from these beautiful beaches, many of the kids have never been to these areas. Today we're going to an island where the kids are going to check out different ecosystems. We have a beach, we have a forest, we have an underwater station, and this is just an opportunity to put the lessons we learned yesterday into practice in a real and beautiful environment. Eu nunca tinha andado num barco, então na primeira vez que eu, eu pisei daquele barco, me deu um medo. E você não imagina o tamanho do medo que me deu, eu ficar me agarrando em coisas com medo do barco virar, né? Então isso me, vai me ajudar bastante, né? Pro futuro e tal, porque biólogo não sai do barco. Tenho 11 anos e moro na Cidade de Deus. Eu quero ser ator por causa que a gente pode ganhar muito dinheiro, é, eu posso conseguir um montão de fãs e ajudar minha família. Eu tenho, ele se chama Calha. É que... Eu tenho, eu tenho uma dificuldade de andar com uma, de andar com um pé torto. Não me atrapalha não. Eu quero participar de filme de ação. Eu também quero fazer um filme de comédia. So the first thing um, I need to get the robot set up. So today, one of the projects is using an underwater robot. So it's a submersible ROV, a remote, remotely operated vehicle. One of the biggest challenges with the underwater robot is that we built it ourselves. And so there may be things that go wrong with the robot that we have to fix on the fly. And so that'll teach the kids about engineering, the fact that not everything goes right the first time and you have to problem solve and troubleshoot and fix the problem. So first I'm going to power it up by plugging into the USB and make sure the batteries are connected. Yeah, we should have gotten a sound. We should have gotten a beep. This could go horribly wrong. This is not good. Okay, I'm a little nervous now. Because this should have fired up right away. Found the problem. So we, <laughs> we have two wires going in here. They're supposed to be both plugged in and only one of them's plugged in. I've already told the kids that they're gonna get to play with a robot. And I knew as soon as I said that, that something was gonna go wrong with the robot. 
and it did. <laughs> but I think I fixed it, so let's see if this works. Hallelujah. So here we're going to explore the ocean without going there ourselves. No humans have been to Mars yet, but the way that we explore Mars is by sending robots. So do you remember the rover that I showed yesterday in the video? It's very similar to this robot right here. So with Mars, once you send the rover there, if anything goes wrong, you can't go there and fix it. So we're gonna simulate that with the underwater robot where we drop it over the side and the students control it remotely. And if anything goes wrong, it's out there underwater. Okay, so I need uh, two volunteers, so you two. So be very careful because it's, uh, it's very easy to make this uh, tangled. So what you're gonna do is hold this and let out the line. Watching Mariani out on the boat was so exciting and really fulfilling because as scientists, we often have a moment that opens up a whole new world of questions. For us, that's very retrospective. We can think back of when that might have happened to us, but to really see it in real time is amazing. <laughs> We're gonna slowly lower it over the side. So the way you're gonna do that is hold on this, this, and slowly let it down like that. It's very difficult to see because of the murky water. Try going down. The other challenge for the underwater robot is that we don't know how clear the water is going to be and also whether or not there's going to be any life for them to see. So is this evidence for life? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Eu gostei de afundar ele para poder ver o fundo. Eu achei muitas conchinhas. Muito bem legal. Eu também vi algumas águas vivas. Parece que a gente descobriu é, se existia vida em Marte. Mas só que na verdade a vida era o peixe. Next, we're going to the intertidal region. This is the shoreline, the beach, the place where a lot of those waves kind of come and splash on the anemones and snails and barnacles. It's a very dynamic environment that these kids haven't really seen before, but it's also a rich place where they can collect samples and learn to search for signs of life. Teaching teenagers is a big challenge, but that's in general. What is special about these kids is that they have the same potential as one sees anywhere else, but they are given fewer opportunities to develop that. 
In the first day, some of them were not engaged in, in the activities, were not showing interest, but going to the island, the kids responded in a fantastic way. What I like the most about teaching Mars Academy is the opportunity of reaching the social gap in Rio. Getting the kids out of the classroom and onto the island has really shown us that in order to be able to engage them, we're going to have to break out of this standard classroom format. In addition to that, you know, we've gotten to hang out with them and spend time with them, and we now have a personal connection. Hopefully we can go back into the classroom with this personal connection and continue that momentum forward, because, you know, we're not only just their teachers anymore, we're really their friends. <laughs> Eu controlar um robô, mas não é um robô de Marte, mas pelo menos é um robô quase de Marte. Aí eu também estava me sentindo é, um general de, da NASA. Eu gosto de ciência, por causa que a gente aprende um pouquinho de natureza e sobre espaço. Mas não gosto muito de ficar na rua, não. É por causa que às vezes tem briga, mas eu fico em casa é, mexendo no notebook. Às vezes na praça, quando a gente tá brincando, passa um ladrão. Aí todo mundo sai correndo. É que ele já ele tava com uma arma. Aí ele começou a, a dar tiro pro alto, aí... Aí todo mundo saiu correndo. Quase que o menino é, levou um tiro na perna. Isso já aconteceu umas três vezes comigo. Mas não tomei nenhum tiro. Hope you all had fun on the field trip. We got a lot of really good stuff. Today we're going to take a look at a lot of these under a microscope so we can see if there are cells or if they're not alive. We got a lot of shells, but I'm curious what people thought was the coolest coolest samples they collected. I'll have to talk about these. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will show you what happened to them. It's, it did not go well. <laughs> because they all died. I hope the kids learned that a lot of the things that they thought were not alive, like the water, like rocks, actually have cells all over them. And I hope that seeing this with your naked eye through a microscope, that's a very convincing demonstration that we need to take care of, of the environment and that life is everywhere. I gostei foi de de ver no microscópio. Essa bonita, ver as células na asa, que é tipo uns ovinhos na asa que tem. Na formiga eu vi que é toda peluda, a formiga é toda peluda, é tipo a, a, a perna de barata. Também a mosca, a mosca também é peluda e o olho dela é tipo óculos, mas só que tem várias baratas. Eu gosto de explorar, ver o que, que tem lá fora, curiosidade, pra saber o que, que tem.
Ah, o que eu gosto mais é corrida de orientação. É a corrida que a gente corre num... em alguma parte de vegetação ou área urbana. Ah, é legal. A gente corre no mato. Aprende a mexer na bússola, olhar o mapa, se orientar. Me faz sentir bem. Eu gostaria de viajar para a Amazônia. Porque ela é muito grande, ela vai até a Colômbia. Conhecer a floresta toda. Ser lugar. Os índios. Were there things that you saw at higher magnification that you did not expect when you just see with your eye? Wow, the ball was moving slowly. The blood, the blood. The one that got us further was when Lula took a little bit of his blood and put it on the plaque. We saw the cells moving from one side to the other. Not only that, but the whole city was moving from one side to the other. And we saw the blood flow from one side to the other. And we saw the blood flow from one side to the other. And we saw the blood flow from one side to the other. And the microscope, you see things at small scale. But with other instruments, you can see things at big scale, like big channels, big rivers. So we have our ingredients for life, the things that life needs. Right now, our list are these three. At the end of the week, we will take an image of Mars, and eventually we will receive it. And the goal is to back out to see if any of these ingredients could have produced the landscape. Fora da escola eu gosto de fazer jiu-jitsu. Ah, eu gosto dele porque eu posso me defender. Na verdade, jiu-jitsu não é pra você brigar, é pra você evitar a briga. A defesa. Aqui só tem coisa errada. Se envolver com um bandido, atrapa a boca. Tá perdido no mundo. Aí se envolveu com coisa errada aí. Ah, ele virou viciado. Ele, ele é viciado em crack. Eu queria era virar médico, né? Ah, eu sou curioso, né? Pra saber. Também é um modo de fazer o bem também. Ser médico, cuidar das pessoas. Porque a saúde aqui no Brasil é muito ruim. É, eu acho que eu posso melhorar melhor, né? Melhorar as coisas. Today we're going to talk about not just Earth and Mars, but our entire solar system. So in our solar system, the sun, which we see up in the sky, is in the very center of the solar system. And there are eight major planets that orbit around the sun. So what planets have you guys heard of before? So today we're going to make a scale model of the solar system. Keeping the kids engaged in the classroom has been a little tough for me, but I'm hoping that helping them build this scale model of the solar system will pique their interest. The solar system is really, really, really big, but we're going to miniaturize it to fit into outside of the school. To do that, we're going to have to do just a little bit of math. We're going to calculate how big we need to make the planets and the distances between the planets. So how about you two, Marte e Jupiter? Porque eu acho que no mundo, principalmente, está precisando de muita lógica. Um 
mês passado. Roubaram minha bicicleta. Então, eu tinha chegado da escola, a cara entrou aqui, aí foi, tipo assim, eu fiquei abismada porque foi dentro da minha casa. Então, pegou minha bicicleta e se mandou. Foi a coisa mais assustadora que eu já vi. Eu quero, eu pretendo ser advogada também, porque eu acho, eu gosto de, de fazer a justiça, eu gosto de, de ser certinha. Então, eu gosto de muito ir pra igreja mesmo, porque tem lá, eu conheço vários jovens, também tem um clube, clube de desbravador. Atenção, filha! A lei de desbravadores ordena! Observar a devoção matinal! É, muito jovem, né? a gente faz muita amizade, a gente conhece muitas pessoas. Da amizade no mundo, eu acho que assim, é muito importante, porque assim, é muito ruim a pessoa não ter uma amizade, não ter ninguém para compartilhar os momentos bons e os momentos maus também, principalmente, porque a gente, quando a gente está triste, a gente gosta de alguém por perto, alguém consolando a gente, alguém dando conselhos. Eu acho que a amizade muda o ódio. Se uma pessoa tiver com ódio de você, você for lá fazer uma amizade com ela e conversar com ela, você pode acabar tendo uma amizade com ela. Now we are going to build our planet out of clay. Can you choose colors? You can take these two if you want. I have more. You can take part of one of them. Esse exercício eu adorei a matemática, porque era o cálculo em cima de cálculo, era, era a divisão, a multiplicação, era a soma também. Tá vendo? A gente calculou que o Mercúrio tá longe do Sol mais ou menos 10 metros. Aí tinha o diâmetro, falando do diâmetro, da largura, da distância, eu adorei esse exercício. Então, vamos contar 10 passos grandes pra gente botar Mercúrio. Mas tem que ser grande. Caraca! Even now we can start seeing the scale. If Philippe is the soul, Davo is Mercury, and it's this big. Ele é o que fica mais perto. Não sei se ele Eu gostei. Caroline. Quando eu vi a receita esta mulher, fiquei tipo, não é só homem que tem, né? E eu fiquei mais motivada ainda, porque eu tinha um certo receio de ser a única mulher no meio dos, dos biólogos. Eu não consigo dar esse espaço. E aí? 13. Então... Eu passei o passo dela por ti. Já é a pular Poxa, o meu tem que ser dois. Peguei o volante atrás mesmo. Nossa, eu vou ter que ir atrás dela. 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 E foi um milímetro. Aí, como eu sou a menor do grupo também, eles ficaram me zoando também pelo meu tamanho. Imagina eu mesmo no, no sistema solar, no, no universo. Sou nada, eu sou uma poeira. Caraca, gente! Caraca! Samar! Vai, vai! Vai, vai! Isn't it amazing how tiny we are in this vast universe? Think about that. Think about how tiny we are and how far away we are from different things. And how valuable and special it is that there's life here on Earth. Now that we have a more personal connection with the students, it's a lot easier to engage them. Hopefully we can use this momentum going forward when they're going to figure out where they want to photograph Mars. And this is why a lot of people want to conserve the environment. There's nowhere else we can go. Eu gosto de fazer, eu gosto de mexer no Facebook, mexer no WhatsApp. No WhatsApp, sim. No grupo da escola, a gente fala mais de malhação.
Quando chega a hora da novela, a gente vê a novela e fica, ah, tá começando a novela. Aí a gente vê a novela. Ah, eu gosto de novela porque, assim, aí eu vejo pra me se inspirar, entendeu? Saber mais o que rola, assim. Eu gosto muito de entretenimento, assim. Minha família, todos eles podem morrer. Mas, assim, tem uma novela agora que saiu, I Love Paraíso Alves, que tá falando muito de favela, assim. Essa daí eu acho que tá sendo a melhor novela agora. Aí eu fico olhando assim, aí eu vejo, ah, vai ser assim que eu vou fazer então, pra me inspirar, entendeu? Às vezes, passa na minha cabeça assim, pra eu ser atriz de novela. Eu sempre gostava de fazer música à noite. Eu só fazia à noite olhando pro céu. Mas assim, mas depois eu pegava e rasgava. Porque eu tenho vergonha de mostrar pros outros. So today is our last day, which is very sad but also very exciting because we get to do our awesome activity. So what you're going to do as a class, you're going to do exactly what the NASA mission planners do when they're planning a future mission. You're going to choose a landing site based on what you find scientifically interesting and you're going to request an image of the site. This will be a place on Mars that nobody else has ever seen before. Okay, so this is the camera that you're going to use. The camera is called High Rise. The reason we need this huge telescope pointed at Mars to get these images is because we're zooming in really, really close. I want the kids to take away from this that they themselves can do science, that science isn't something that's reserved for people with fancy degrees and bow ties. Anybody with interest in nature can go out there and study it and create new knowledge. So by the end of this hour, we want to have our target site. Yeah, of course. All of these will be submitted to NASA, but it's NASA's choice about how to prioritize them. So if you have a favorite place, you have to tell us why it's interesting. It's very important to have a strong science justification, a good science case. And you can use what you've learned this week about the ingredients for life, habitable environments, to find the best place on Mars to explore. So what I want you to do as a group is to explore around Mars using Google Mars, and I'm just here to help. But it's up to your team to decide where you want to go. So Victor, I want to ask you what interests you about Valles Marineris? Maybe we can find the best place in Valles Marineris to look for past water activity. So if you can find a place that's never been imaged before, that would be really cool. Because then we'd be the first ones to see it. So that's the polar cap, the polar ice cap. Not many images here. This is the polar ice cap. The ice is the white stuff, and the dark area is where there is no ice or dust on top of the ice because it's a slope and there's layers in the slope. So I think this is a very interesting place to look at because you can see how blurry the images that we have are and so this will be the first image of its kind to see this place in high resolution. This place is also very exciting because NASA has never sent a lander or a rover to the polar ice caps, and so uh, this is sort of un uh, uncharted territory. Esse 
passar aqui. Né? É um lugar melhor que tem quartos lisos e altas para tirar foto. Alright. Let's do it. Most education has both a push element and a pull element. A push from the outside is your parents encouraging you to do well in school. A pull is something more mysterious. It's something that a kid wants to explore on their own. It's an intrinsic interest in the world around you. Today made me think that we're starting to reach the kids in some interesting ways by pulling students through what they find interesting to inspire some seed of interest that will get them out of the more negative influences in their lives. We have uh, Ari on Skype here. Muito obrigado pela oportunidade de falar com vocês hoje. Me chamo Ari. So, this is our camera. It's the most powerful camera ever sent to another planet. We take beautiful pictures of the surface of Mars. My grandparents, your parents, your grandparents, they never saw images like we have today. So what you're going to learn in school and what you're going to learn in the future is going to make us learn more about Mars. So give yourselves a hand because you are the future of space exploration. Okay, so when we plan to take a picture, we have to work with other instruments aboard the spacecraft. So when you select a picture for us to take and we look at it, it has to have a good explanation for science. So in other words, you can't say, oh, I want to take this picture because I think it's pretty. You have to tell me what you want to learn from that picture. So if you're ready to uh, tell me what you want to look at, Let's go! Levanta todo mundo do meu grupo, por favor. Vai passar a reversão assim. Kaique. Kaique, vamos dormir? Ela é um pouco tímida, então ela vai dormir. Eu vou dançar, ela vai dançar. 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 Eu gostei bastante, eu me senti, tipo, importante. This is uh, Lucas. Olá. Olá, Lucas. Era a primeira vez que eu conversei com a NASA. Latitude is 36 degrees. Ok. 42 minutos. Yeah, yeah, okay. 72 seconds north. Okay. So he's curious about what the white spots are. Okay. Será que houve água no rio? Eu achei legal. Eu espero ver se existia vida em Marte ou se antigamente tinha água. Mariana. 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 <laughs> she too is shy, so if you can dance again, don't break that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Oh, my group me chamou para poder conversar com o povo da NASA. E estou um pouco nervosa, né? Porque é o povo da NASA, né? Não é o que pessoas. Se chama Pac-Man porque tem a forma igual a Pac-Man. Escolhemos por quê? Porque parece que caiu um meteoro no lugar e ali havia água congelada. Então, eu gostei bastante porque vão tirar foto de Marte que ninguém nunca viu, entendeu? Então, vamos ser as primeiras pessoas a ver isso. Tipo, você se sente um pouco né, especial por isso. Ok, good. Ah, é. If we decide to take these images, it will probably be a month or two months before they actually get to the spacecraft. A ciência é muito importante e muito obrigado. So you 
guys have been amazing. We've turned you all into scientists, I hope. As you heard, it takes two, three months to acquire the images. And we will be back, probably in October, um, to show you what you created, and we will analyze them together. Now, the high-rise operational team in Arizona has to beam our requests up through the deep space network from Madrid, California, or Australia to the spacecraft. Then the camera has to orient just right to get the exact spot that we're looking for. And finally, the data has to be sent back to Earth and processed into the beautiful images that we ultimately get to see. So this is extremely exciting for any scientist. It's something I've never done before, and I can't wait to see what we find. Now that half of Mars Academy has been completed, I think that we've really underestimated the complexity of what we've gotten ourselves into. It's not just the translation, it's not just the classroom behavior problems, but it's the magnitude of what we're trying to instill in these kids. I think we've made some pretty good adjustments so far, but in order to make it really stick and change their lives, we need to consolidate what's happened. I think so far it's been a fun week for the kids. It's been something different from their normal classroom activities, but we need to make it more than that, and that's our challenge for week two. Welcome back to part two of Mars Academy. We're so happy to be here. And it's been five months. We sent our image requests up to the orbiter and they came back and we have something very exciting to show you. So we're really lucky because all three groups got at least one image taken by Hi-Rise, which is very unusual. So what we're gonna do now is reveal the images. Are you ready? Yes? See? <laughs> so we're gonna start with group one, which is my group. In group one, here is your image of Mars. In our image, we found a network of channels that were probably formed by ancient rivers on Mars. And along one of the steep sides of one of these channels are some dark streaks, which could be recent landslides, which would suggest um, current geologic activity on Mars. When I saw the photos, I felt like, they said that they were going to send it and they it back. Ai, me deu muita alegria. All right, my group was looking at a crater, and here is what we discovered. My group's image revealed a big crater near the equator. Now, there are lots and lots of craters on Mars. They happen all over the place, but this one is particularly interesting. It has a bizarre set of sinuous polygons that could indicate ice that had liquefied during the impact and could still be there today, right underneath the surface. Pensei que eles iam voltar mais depois que eles descobriram. Pensei que era mais velado, mas eles voltaram e mostraram as fotos de lá dos novos lugares que eles viram lá. E ah, me senti feliz. Group number three was looking at the North Polar Cap. And here's the image. Close to the North Pole, my group found a beautiful series of layers of ice and dust that record the past climate cycles of Mars and could tell us a lot about what controls that climate and how it's different and similar to Earth. Eu me sinto bem, como dizer, especial por isso, né? Por ser uma das primeiras que são as mais importantes, entendeu? De ver, aliás, né? All right, soon we're going to analyze the Mars images more closely. But first, tomorrow we're going out to the forest, and then on the last day we're going to use what we learned in the forest to design um, investigations with your images. So this is an image from orbit. So right now we are up here somewhere, right? So we're going to go down into the forest and explore that area tomorrow. There's a lot of trees, right? Every little dot is a tree. Right now. Where is that? Where was the waterfall? Okay. <laughs> Oh, up here. Okay, we can go there. 
So you think it's a waterfall? Can we zoom in on that? All right, what does that look like? Interesting. We think it's water? So you think it's like a lake? It's possible. Okay, remember that place, and we're going to go there tomorrow. Okay, so our goal tomorrow, we want to know how this area formed. Rio is famous for its huge, beautiful mountains. So we're going to read the landscape and figure it out. Today we're taking the kids to the Tijuca Forest to see if they're right about their predictions. And this is the exact same thing that mission scientists do on Mars. You start with an image from orbit, and you need to know what you're going to see on the ground. <laughs> Tijuca Forest is not only the biggest urban forest in the world, it's also a massive conglomeration of granite peaks. Uh, and we see these mountains every day. I mean, we are from, from Rio, we grew up with these hills, with these majestic hills all over the place. But if you ask the average person from Rio, they have no idea what the geology of these peaks are. They have no idea how they got there, what they're made of, and what is the history uh, behind it. If we can show these kids a bit of the geology of their city, what I hope is that every time that they look at these hills, they are going to see not only a hill, they're going to see a scientific history. Okay, so remember yesterday we were looking at satellite images of this area at the end. And Caroline, what did you think it was? <laughs> Waterfall or lake. So you can see that it is not a lake. We are in a parking lot. So the point is that from orbit you can't tell everything. You have to go there and see. So that's what we did. And that's the same challenge on Mars, is like we only have orbital imagery and you have to go there to see, and it's probably quite different. So now we're gonna go to this part, these shaded areas. Eu me sinto muito bem de estar aqui. Na cachoeira foi super legal. Eu nunca vi nenhuma cachoeira antes é a primeira vez. So, all of these mountains were underground when Rio was first formed. waterfall over there. The waterfall. So I hear you want to be a marine biologist. I always liked the animals of the sea. My mother and I always went to the beach. And from that I would be researching, because I had access to the internet, and from that I would be getting more and more. That's, that's really cool, because so one of the reasons that I went and studied astronomy and um, Geochemistry is, my mom and I used to go outside at night when I was young and look at all the stars. 
and watch for shooting stars or um, look at all the look for planets and telescopes. So it's kind of cool that your mom also inspired you to pursue science. Eu não vejo a hora de ir para a faculdade, sério. Usa muito matemática. Yeah, you do have to know math, but you know, I didn't, I didn't have the easiest time with math either. I mean, my <laughs> my first year of college, I actually failed my math class, <laughs> so, and I had to retake it. Um, but even struggling with that and failing some classes, <laughs> I'm still a scientist now. So, you know, it can be hard sometimes and you have to do lots of studying. But if you work really hard and you put in the time and the effort, once you actually do learn the science and you get to apply it, it's actually, it's a lot of fun and it's fascinating and it's a very rewarding career. Tudo para chegar no que você quer sempre tem um caminho difícil, né? Se Sempre pelo caminho mais fácil, nunca é uma coisa muito boa, entendeu? Então as coisas boas eu acredito que vem numa jornada difícil. Então, se eu quero mesmo uma coisa, eu vou ter que passar por todos os obstáculos para conseguir tudo o que eu quero. E eu acredito que isso para mim não vai ser nenhum, nenhum problema, porque quando eu gosto muito de uma coisa, eu vou até o fim para conseguir. Sim, yeah. that's exactly the mindset that you need to do that. So welcome to the cave, the gruta. So first I think we should just stop and listen to the sounds. That can give us a clue about how this place formed. So, what do you hear? So if you imagine this happening, those drips happening over millions of years, it's flushing out all of the dirt and the rock. So first the, the cave starts off as a, a crack in the rock. The crack allows the water to trickle down into it. And slowly over time it, it carves out the rock and the, the crack opens wider. And over time you get the, the cave. So do we see any life here? No. No. Yeah, so maybe there's some microscopic organism. So there's no trees in here, no big plant life, right? So why not? Okay, but you could fit. There's enough space here for a tree, right? What are the ingredients for life that we talked about last time? Oxygen, agua. Yeah. Yes. So in here there's very little light, right? So the, any plant that grows here has to be able to survive with almost no light. It sometimes gets a little bit of light for part of the day. So that's a hint about what kind of life there is in here, that it, it, it's small because it needs very little light. Okay, so we can explore a little bit. Cemento. In the afternoon, we set aside some time for the kids to just explore and, and wander around on their own. And I was just grinning watching the kids explore the cave and crawl around. Okay. Oh man. 
And I noticed a group of kids staring intently at one of the walls of the cave. We hadn't told them to do any of this, but there they were, out exploring and investigating and doing science. Okay, so we found lichen. They're all over, these little white. Very small, but they're very uh, efficient organisms. It was really rewarding for me to see that everything that we've been teaching the students through this program, they've not only learned, but they've been putting to practice and doing on their own without me telling them to do it. Okay, so today, the last day of Mars Academy, Brazil. How did you guys like the field trip yesterday? What was your favorite part? Qual foi a parte que vocês mais gostaram? Da caverna. Sei Why was your favorite? Fica em pinha. Como lá em cima, bem de antigo. Como assim? É de lá em cima, lá em cima muito de antigo. So yeah, so so that kind of process of understanding, looking at a map and then comparing that to what it's like being there in person. That's a lot of what uh, uh, Martian scientists do looking at images and what you guys are gonna do with your images. So now we're gonna go do experiments to try to recreate what we see. These images reveal corners of the universe that no one has ever looked at before. We're hoping that the kids will see something interesting and we want them to test how those features might have formed. We are going to be trying to recreate these flow features. So we're going to do an experiment to see if it's water or if it's dry rocks. We need a volunteer. Fala que é um voluntário. Eu posso ser. If you'd asked me five years ago, I would have never thought that I would be traveling to Brazil to teach kids in one of the poorest neighborhoods about space science. But this is one of the things in life where you dump in everything you have and you work so hard at a project and the rewards that you get are better than anything you could have imagined. These are like rocks. So you're gonna try and recreate that flow by putting these here and having them roll so down. Uh, this is And if you do it enough, you can see that the dark kind of starts showing underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the little, the, the ridges. It's close, right? I love seeing Nicholas get so excited about trying to reproduce the features in our Mars image, and I hope that after our program's done, he can channel all of this excitement into whatever he decides to do. It's like if it was waves. Yeah. Here, here. When the tia said that the people would come to do the activities that we did in the project, I thought, ah, it would be hard, it would be tal. But then it passed the first day, the second, the third, the third day that we started to work together. I thought that it wasn't hard, that it was good to pay more attention and study. That it was something that we could take to the future and take it. It's okay, it's good. What is the difference between the future and the future? Seeing Mariani work out the solutions to science problems was so rewarding for me, and I hope that she can use the lessons that she's learned in this program uh, to help her in her quest to become a scientist herself. The part of the mm -hmm. as, I don't see. Hey, rocks. Which grounds? Which grounds? Yeah, on the top. O programa ele reforçou a minha, o meu desejo de ser bióloga marinha. Eu nunca pensei que eu iria conversar com um cientista de verdade, entendeu? 
cientista fora do Brasil, né? E eu pude conhecer um pouco mais sobre o meu futuro, né? Eu nunca pensei que isso iria acontecer, mas aconteceu. All right, so welcome to the poles of Mars. So these layers are in the polar ice caps, and what they show is the change in climate of Mars going between icy and dusty climates. So what we're going to do here is try to recreate these layers in the polar cap. This experience was truly a privilege because it's not every day that you get a chance to see kids channel their innate curiosity into doing actual science. I need two volunteers. Ew, ew. And not only that, but these are students that many people would consider disadvantaged, but I haven't seen that at all. I've seen some of the most talented and capable students in the world. So the, uh, the idea or the hypothesis we want to test is that the layering that we see in the image is random. And Stevan is going to roll the dice to see how thick it's going to be in seconds. Okay, so go ahead. Samara, she's really, really bright. She's making the best of every single opportunity that is given to her. She's one of these kids that you want to take from there and then give her a fellowship to Harvard. Does that look familiar? So you can see that over time, when you have a snowstorm or ice forming, and then dust on top of it, during a dust storm, it creates these layers. So if you're standing on the surface of the ice cap, you, you can't see the layers underneath, right? But you planned ahead and you brought your drill. Can you see the layers there? So this is an experiment that you could do on Mars if you were an astronaut, you could dig down. I thought it was something extraordinary, it went a little further. Eu descobri muitas coisas também, é, muitas coisas também que eu não sabia. Na escola eu percebi que eu não aprendo nem, eu acho que até essa parte do que eu aprendi nesse projeto. Ver mulheres trabalhando nessa, nesse, nessa área, eu, eu me incentivei bastante, porque aí me deu mais incentivo para continuar no que eu quero. E não importa o que as pessoas digam, o que importa é o meu esforço. Inside the crater we have a lot of weird curve flow things. So we're going to try to recreate that. This is one of the most inspiring two weeks of my life because we've been able to show that exploration, even at its highest level, is open to anyone. That we're all explorers and that it's a fundamental part of being human. We can tap into, regardless of if you are in California or in Rio de Janeiro. Lucas really seems to love this project and watching that excitement bubble up has been really fun. <laughs> so we saw a lot of water flow in, yeah? And see how it made those like swirls? So that looks a little bit like this stuff. É observar o céu. Eu quase que eu nunca conheci um planeta real. Também me senti como meu sonho tivesse realizado. Porque eu gosto muito de ciências e da NASA também. Alright, Victor is one of the quieter kids in the class, but he's also fearless. <laughs> so that was probably too big. <laughs> he kept wanting to interact and to ask questions, and I think throughout this week we've opened his eyes to a broader realm of possibility. Ah, o projeto fez eu olhar o mundo ao meu redor, fazer várias perguntas me fazer, perguntar se Deus existe, né? Também. O universo é muito grande e como o mundo foi evoluindo longe e se existe outro outra vida, outro planeta, eles fizeram despertar esse negócio também que eu tinha esquecido. Eu pensava nisso quando era pequeno. So the initial aim was to circumvent the traditional educational system, to take kids out of their comfort zone and into the world. And I really think that's worked. We've seen that everyone's asking questions. They want to know how they can learn more about the universe. But it's really frustrating to think that for some of these kids, the neighborhood they grew up in will dictate their future more than we ever can. There's so much strength, so much intelligence, so much potential going untapped.
So the motor will rotate to compensate for the Antigamente, quando não existia bateria, eles faziam que nem relógio a corda, botavam um peso e esse peso ia caindo e girando o telescópio ali mesmo. The kids changed the way that I see the favelas in Rio. We are not talking about shabby houses in a hill, we are talking about actual lives. We are talking about the lives of two million people. And these kids, they are so bright, they deserve so much more than what this country gives them. When we're having the last day of the program here, Caroline, she was always coming back to, to the line. She saw once and would come back to see her again. She was really into it. Not everybody can be a scientist. It requires talent. But social background has nothing to do with that. So. A good scientist can come from anywhere. Foi a, a primeira vez que, que você olhou num, num telescópio? Foi a primeira foi? vez. É. Então, me conta mais, como é que foi quando você viu no, pelo, pelo te, uh, telescópio da primeira vez? Foi maravilhoso. É um momento mágico, não é? É. é. No meu caso, eu me interessei por astronomia quando eu tinha cinco anos, né? quando eu vi uma, uma gravura né? do Sol, da Terra, a Lua e dos... Do, dos planetas e aquilo me atingiu com uma força enorme, né? Então eu acho que, que todo astrônomo lembra muito bem a primeira vez que a gente olhou num, num, num telescópio. Toda hora, toda hora eu entrava na fila para ver. Eu me lembro. Toda hora, em todos. Aí teve uma hora que eu parei ali, aí esqueci de ver Saturno, aí eu que demorou para pesar, né? Eu voltei correndo quando eu vi que tava, voltei correndo para ver toda hora aí, toda hora, toda hora, toda hora. Aí eu pedia para botar lá, depois eu botar na lua de novo. Eu sempre gostei de ciências, mas eu não sabia qual era o nome ideal para falar. Aí como agora eu sei, eu posso falar o que eu quero ser. Isso, eu quero ser astrônoma. É mesmo? É, foi por causa das estrelas da noite.